Charles. I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Linda Quinlan. And welcome to All Things LGBTQ. Today is Tuesday, June 29th. And we'd like to recognize that we're recording in Montpelier, Vermont, which we uh, know is unceded indigenous land. So, Anne, what do you have for headlines? I have many headlines. I pages can see the pages. And pages. <laughs> That's right. Are you going to start with continents or? Yes, I'm oh, okay. organizing it by continent. <laughs> and I left out. Um, Europe? <laughs> well, um, Australia only had one story, but Europe and Asia, other continents have a lot more. Starting with yeah. Europe, there's a whole um, kerfluffle occurring. But let me read the headlines and then I'll explore it more deeply in my segment. Istanbul has a lot of negative stories involving Pride Week. Police attack an LGBTQI's picnic. One person was detained. The Istanbul governor bans the parade, parade march. And then um, the activists had it anyway. Uh, authorities fired tear gas and arrests occurred. 25 people were arrested. Uh -huh. And I have a picture before you now of one of the protesters being tear gassed and strong armed. Um, Hungary's parliament has passed an anti LGBTQ law ahead of the, uh, the next election in 2022. And I mentioned last time that they were interested in censoring, banning a children's book, but now they have gone much further in a sweeping anti-LGBTQ measure that the legislature has passed. This has triggered such a chain reaction throughout Europe. Throw uh, them out. Well, commenting on the Hungarian law, the Czech president, Mr. Zeman, said, I can understand homosexuals but transgenders are disgusting. Um, however, you know, we saw, all saw the EU summit and Biden and everybody parading around for photo ops, but a lot happened behind the scenes or out of the radar of the mainstream media. Your EU leaders blasted Viktor Orban over this anti-LGBT bill during tense and at times emotional summit. Did you see any emotion in this summit? No. They're absolutely exercised about this bill, and I'll tell you more about that. Um, the Germany-Hungary football game at the Euro Cup was marked by controversy because the mayor of Munich wanted to light up the stadium mm -hmm. in rainbow colors, and the league opposed it primarily because it was between Germany and Hungary. So in the games, when the Hungarian national anthem uh, was being sung by the Hungarian team, uh, activists ran out and held the rainbow flag right on the pitch, they call it. And there was so much, I mean, they as the um, spectators filed into the stadium, people were at the door saying, would you like a rainbow flag? Would you like a sticker? So. Um, there was a lot of uh, activism on that score. Um, Warsaw has had a gay pride parade, um, prompting the Polish education minister, Brzmyslaw Czarnik, to say that the LGBT march was an insult to public morality. So backlash, assertion of activism and strength, followed by backlash. Um, Good news, Norway plans to uh, ban conversion therapy. So Asia has a lot going on also. Again, there's a mixed result from Hong Kong. Um, and let me pause for a moment in this story because there's an LGBTQ documentary that was pulled from a film festival after the Hong Kong Film Censorship Authority banned a full screening. And um, it's a, an account of Taiwan's struggle to pass a same-sex marriage bill. And it's called, uh, I'm 
pausing for a minute, but I will show you the clip. It's called, shall we? Taiwan Equals Love is the first documentary that discusses the issue of same-sex marriage after it became officially recognized in Taiwan in 2016. The film interviewed several couples um, and documented the journey of these three sex, same-sex couples um, from Hong Kong um, as they faced from Taiwan as they faced resistance from anti-LGBT communities. Um, so let's look, let's take a look at this clip. This society is not so safe. A five-year-old child should know that there are people who are attracted to the same sex and will bully them. Because our trip to the city is to meet them and to talk to them. We hope they can accept it. We went to eat food. We saw that they were on the wall. They had a tradition of the anti-gay-gay culture. Every person's tradition. 它不能是零嘛，对不对？我们在一起那么近，这种条纹式的，它一点保障都没有，这太残忍了。对相爱两个人来讲太残忍了。我们在追求的其实只是一个选项，是所有人都是非常轻松、平常就可以获得的。你们以为这个世界上没有这群人吗？其实我们都一直都在，只是你们没有看见。就算最后我们找不到回家的路，就是他就是我的家，而我就是他的家。Interesting. It is. It is. Um, yet the Hong Kong Film Commission banned it. But there has more been more positive outcome in um, Hong Kong because the gay couple whom I mentioned years ago when they brought this suit, they have won the high court battle as the judge rules that the housing complex they were couldn't be admitted to because they were same sex. Um, the policy is discriminatory. Unfortunately, one of the guys died uh -huh. before the um, ruling came down. But Judge Anderson Chow ruled that the housing authority singularly failed to produce reliable evidence to substantiate the argument on which they ruled against these men. Um, Finally, a short Hong Kong headline, Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam says the city will support the gay games and calls the lawmaker's hate-filled outburst unnecessarily divisive. Remember, lawmaker Ho said is bringing dirty money into the city. Well, she says she will have none of that as the leader. Malaysia is seeking a stricter Sharia law for promoting the LGBT lifestyle. And this is a direct response to the pride parades. So it you know, comes down heavily on um, not, you know, homosexuality, breaking Islamic rules, and you, you know, you can't uh, pro be any, do anything that is uh, counted as profanity in, uh, by the Muslim faith, and homosexuality falls under that. Um, Finally, a, from Asia, a good news, a Japanese soccer star, Kumi Yokoyama, comes out as transgender. Oh. So, okay. um, the star is very happy. He's one of the, he is one of the highest profile names 
in sports to come out as tra transgender, saying that living in the United States and Germany helped. Doesn't say they are a 27 year old. It doesn't say the program, so let's use the, the pronoun, so let's use they. They had top surgery and they're going to have more treatments when they retire. May I go now to Latin America? No objections? Well, that's good. <laughs> Last time, we may, well, Linda will cut me off when she sees it. There are two. She's a little further away this week, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but she, she can speak up, and we know she, she will if necessary. But anyway, in Latin, mostly Central America, there are two major stories. Um, one is very sad. Three LGBTQ Guatemalans were killed in attacks in a single week. Mm. And I have sequential pictures. They were uh, of the two trans people. They were both trans activists active uh, in a trans rights organization in Guatemala. The first is Andrea Gonzalez, and the second is Cici Caricia Expada. Uh, a third person was a gay man who was killed, who wasn't, he isn't really named or pictures, pictured. <coughs> the question might, uh, might be whether or not he was killed in a hate crime or a robbery. But his sister said, you know, it was a hate crime. He was stabbed a million times. Um, so that's a very sad story. A more positive story uh, concerns the Mexican election, where two trans women have made history after being elected to the Mexican Congress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have a picture before you now of them. They are um, they they uh, one activist uh, who is 52 runs a collective called Together for the Way of Diversity. Um, and um, Garcia is an activist from Mexico City. And um, Andrea Gonzalez is, has been a longtime activist as well. Um, okay, shall we move to Keith now? Well, okay, but all right. But <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. I think we're going back to Latin America after this, but <laughs> well, there we are. Can I just finish? Maria Clemente Garcia is on the right. She's 36, and she's the person with bangs. You can see her picture. And Salma Lovano is left 52, and they're present. They're now. They've been seated in Congress. Good. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> she put the pressure on you. I know. I know. <laughs> so the trivia. 1978, Gilbert Baker designed what we now call and recognize as the pride flag. In one of our recent interviews, a comment was made about adding a color back into the flag. This isn't how it originally looked. What were the original colors, and did they have meaning? Linda got part of it, so there we are. So events. On Saturday, June 26, there was a Pride Day parade and festival in Burlington. As reported by WCAX, the celebration started as a demonstration march and grew into a festival. It was put on by BTV Cop Watch. This is an activist group, and those who remember the news of Battery Park being occupied. Right, because they didn't want to convert it into condos or something. No, 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 no. Battery Park was occupied because of the actions of the Burlington Police Department. Oh, okay. This was an outgrowth of Black Lives Matter. Well, this group stayed together, and they decided they needed to do something for Pride and hosted the People's Pride and described it as a guerrilla event that seeks to reunite liberation and celebration on the weekend leading up to Stonewall Day, 
no police and no banks. Yes. So, so we're going to be following them. But if you miss debt, for those of us who are not on Facebook, fear not, because on Saturday, June, July 24th, White River Junction, Pride Parade and Festival. Meet at the Main Street Museum in White River Junction at noon for the parade. Festivities to start. Uh -huh. And it's supposed to go on until 4 o'clock. They're going to go through White River Junction and back to the museum okay. for, for the festival portion. And then, of course, on Sunday, September 5th, is when the Pride Center of Vermont will be doing their Pride celebration. We're going to be sort of watching closely now to see who they might have for corporate sponsors. Uh -huh. And in connection with that Pride Day, you can go online and both the Pride Center of Vermont and Vermont Folklife Center have an exhibit talking about the first Pride Day in 1983 with photographs and talking with some of the organizers and participants of that event. Were you um, interviewed for that? No. I, I recommended you to one of the, someone at the Folklife Center. Moving on. <laughs> In, here in Montpelier, if you're looking for something to do, Friday, July 2nd, 6 p.m., get out your bicycle. It's queer critical mass time again. Oh, no. Meet, meet at the Kellogg Library at 6 p.m. This is a recurring event. Not until I the, get my electric bike. <laughs> <laughs> they would allow you to do that. Yeah. First Friday of each month going through October. And who knows through the winter, you may just be putting on snow tires. In Castleton, Saturday, July 10th, Cedar Meadows Performance Space, Backwoods Broadway Drag Show by the performers from Merchants Hall. Now, this will be after dusk, and you really need to go to cedarmeadowsbtvermont.com for the information about tickets and when to show up. It's after dusk, and they say adults only because they allow alcohol to be on the grounds. And they will be having both drag queens and kings. Oh. Some of the performers might be Anita Cocktail, <laughs> Sassy O.T.'s, <laughs> Ryder Gently, <laughs> Donna Rhea, <laughs> oh, and Vera Wild. Zach is giggling in the production room. <laughs> And, and I, I really do want to stress that you need to be looking at organizations, website, Facebook pages, because there are a lot of activities that are being you know, brought back. Some are still virtual, some are in person, some are a hybrid. Are some of these from the Rutland group, some of the drag queens? Because I know they That's have Merchants that Hall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, this, actually the person who started Merchant Hall started the performance space at Cedar Meadows, and you might get to meet them in an upcoming interview show. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, enough said. One of the things, you know, coming back outright is doing their Friday night groups. There will be in-person and virtual because they found that the virtual really worked for our youth in truly in rural areas. We're getting back and forth to a group. Did you mention this last yes, time? Yes, I did. But what I'm going into is camp is also happening this summer in person, 75% capacity, July 3rd through July 9th, and then July 11th through the 17th. Both sessions booked within 30 oh. minutes wow. of being posted. So. <clears throat> Real quick news, um, the VA Healthcare has announced that they're now going to be both providing the services and coverage for gender affirmation procedures for transgender veterans. They so are? They are. Good. That just started. And looking at Bangor, Maine, the Mabel Wadsworth Center is expanding their health care services, specifically targeting rural tr transgender community. What is unique about the center that was founded in 1984, this was based on that old feminist healthcare model about how to deliver person-centered care. Mm -hmm. Really quickly, and I definitely will be doing a follow-up, there's a new counseling service 
that has started in the Burlington area. And you need to go on to their website and all will be revealed badindianwife.com. <laughs> that it's not a racial slur. It has meaning and significance. As <clears throat> Courtney Casper, who founded it, will tell you, this is an organization looking outside the traditional medical model to create affinity spaces for people of color and the indigenous community so that they can truly get the health care they need and they can heal. And then really quickly, Alice Bechtel is added yes. again. Allison. Allison. Allison Bechtel. Right. I'm sorry. I, I've got it written correctly right there. <laughs> oh, I know how that goes. Let me tell you. Oh, please. <laughs> the secret to superhuman strength. It says it's a gra graphic memoir, mm -hmm. think cartoons, like to watch out for, reflecting on her complicated relationship with her body and exercise over the course of 60 years. Remember, she's Vermont's cartoonist laureate. I think we created just for her. And sort of associated <laughs> with that, VPR for Pride Month interviewed three LGBTQ plus Vermonters and their intern Reed Nye created a little cartoon strip and the people included were Chris Tebbets who has been an interview with us before, Lisa Phillips mm -hmm. and Brenda Churchill. Oh, so, nice. And you can go on the VPR site to find it. May I add something about Bechtel? Yeah. I heard her interviewed about this recent oh. book. It was a fabulous interview. She did it on Gay USA. And it's a memoir about aging, kind yeah. of, which I can certainly relate to. But with a lot of philosophical musings, and, you know, it's really kind of encyclopedic in its coverage, so I, I can't wait to read Didn't it. Didn't she win the prize for that? She won the Lammy for Fun Home. Yeah. yeah. Didn't she win something recently for this book? Well, it hasn't been out long enough. Who, I don't who knows? Yeah. It could yeah. be a future birthday gift. Oh, <laughs> May, though. Not until May. Maybe it'll be in paperback by then. <laughs> <laughs> On to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. We're looking right at you. <clears throat> well, I have for my headlines, Biden declares that pride is back at the White House after designating Pulse a national monument. Catholics and Southern Baptists making faith more about their politics than God. Carrie Nazib's coming out could help change sports. He's the first active football player to be openly gay. He plays for the Vegas Raiders. The NFL quickly came out in support of him, <coughs> as did other NFL players. So that's good. Um, and the religious right is running a boot camp. Guess what for? Candidates to take over school boards. You know, may I just say, say something? I heard an interview with Carrie, Terry Gross yeah. that she did with an NBC reporter who's covering this whole thing. And, you know, it there was a flare-up in uh, Essex Junction, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it's a concentrated... Uh, and the motivation, according to this reporter, <coughs> is that the right wants to reintroduce the Tea Party. So they're going yeah. around on all these local That's why they're doing people. these boot camps. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did I uh, jump on your story? I no, didn't mean to. No. We that should, really just says what I... We should be doing the same thing. I know. We really should. I know it. Who, who wants the Tea Party back? But, of course... No, we should be doing it on our liberal side, having yeah. boot camps to get people elected. And I'll have more about this, but it's a good story about four women are throwing a pride parade in a tiny, tiny town in Nevada. And then we have the inspiring gay pelicans. <gasps> in Florida. <laughs> yes. Ah. The couple have been together for nearly two decades. Pope and Enrique, two brown pelicans, are residents of the Harbor Seabird Station in Miami. Is there a picture? Yes. Every year, one of the two pelicans presents a stick 
to the other as a sign of affection. Aww. They build a nest together and take care of the placebo eggs. So here is a picture of Pope and Enrique. Your penguins get competition. I know it. <laughs> In order, in honor of the 40th anniversary of the beginning of the HIV and AIDS epidemic in 1981, Ruth Coker Burks is interviewing, interviewed on her legacy and impact. Protesters pour out beers. Jessica Stern, who has been executive director of Outright Action International since 2012, will be the next U.S. On envoy for global LGBTQ rights. And then we'll have more on this story, but the KKK hands out anti-LGBTQ flyers in Virginia. Carla Delvenay, I think, shows off her home in L.A. that was featured by architectural Digest. The pansexual, gender fluid model and actress gave a tour of what she calls her adult playhouse. It blends the sophistication with playfulness. There is a vagina tunnel. The passageway connects one room to another. And here is a picture of the vagina tunnels. Ooh. Rowan Farrow to present the Peabody Award to the documentary to Welcome to Chechnya, the 2020 mm -hmm. HBO story that documented the horrific gay purge taking place there. David France follows undercover activists as they secretly filmed and documented, documented the brutal and ongoing purge of the LGBT community. We showed a clip on we the show. I still haven't seen it, though, because we don't have HBO. I know. We'll have to we go to someone. We have to break down. We'll have to go to somebody's house who has it. And in good news, Louisiana governor vetoes the anti-trans bill. Governor John Bell Edwards vetoed a bill that would have banned trans girls and women from competing in sports for females. Um, let's see. LSU sprinter Shah Kari Richardson shatters a 30-year-old record in the 100-meter dash and is en route to an NCAA title. Richardson has become an instant LGBTQ hero. Did you see her? I almost did a clip, um, but I didn't. Um, she has. She had like orange hair. Oh yes. Orange. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Didn't she say her girlfriend said be, say said be loud, be you, be, be yeah. who you are. California bans state-funded and state-sponsored travel to five more anti-LGBTQ states, which brings their total to 17. The new states of the list are Arkansas, Florida, Montana, North Dakota, and West Virginia. So, Do you those, have the old, the, the other uh, No, states? 17, no. Okay. We can guess. Well, and we can uh, go back to <laughs> yeah. that. Story. And we can post it on our Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> it's to be continued, I'm sure. Okay, that's it. Ann, back to you. Okay, I've gathered my thoughts and my papers, organized Good. my papers. <laughs> uh, and I think I'll go to Africa next to make sure that I cover at least the headlines. Uh, and then, if there's time, I'd like to go back to the European Union kerfluffle. But uh, <laughs> let's go to Africa first. There's, uh, there are four stories. The first is really terrible. Um, three LGBT plus people have been killed in South Africa during Pride Month. Uh, activists have been protesting it for months. Hate crimes have gone up in South Africa. In this instance, um, Anele Bengu, a 22-year-old lesbian, was found dead on the side of the road. This past weekend, she was stabbed, raped, and disemboweled while she was traveling to visit a friend. Um, the second victim, well, oh, I'm sorry, Nick, the speaker of KZN's legislature said that the killing was very painful news to receive, especially during Pride Month. Lesbians 
in an often homophobic and patriarchal society face a further danger, the idea that they can be changed and made into women through corrective rape. I mean, I've heard of this. I heard it was a, but anyway, it's, it has some currency in South Africa still. Uh, the BBC reported that in 2011, 31 lesbians had been subjected to sexual assault to change their sexual orientations in the past 10 years. Another black lesbian, Lulama Mavenda, was killed in her own home just days before the other death. She was assaulted by three men in Cape Town on June 5th. Her body was only discovered last Friday because the neighbors broke her door down. Uh, the police immediately said it was natural causes, but an autopsy revealed numerous assault wounds. These included burn marks that possibly indicated that she could have been assaulted with a burning object. Just one day later, after she was murdered, a 28-year-old gay man, Moxie Soul Level, was found dead. Uh, it's unknown whether it was a botched robbery or a hate crime. Um, but his sister speculated that it was a hate crime. Now let's turn to better news. Malawi holds its first gay pride parade, and I have a picture now of this you know, small group of courageous activists the Pride Parade is a show of resilience in this instance against anti-gay laws in one of the most homophobic cultures in the world. The marchers marched uh, to the government building presenting a petition in which they're asking the government, demanding the government to recognize and protect the LGBT community. They want a legalization of same-sex uh, marriages and access to health. In 2010, Malawi handed a 14-year prison sentence to the first gay couple to come out publicly. Um, they were 26 they still, and 23 at the time. They were arrested in 2009 after celebrating their engagement um, instead of their planned, ahead of their planned wedding. Their arrest sparked international condemnation about the country. Uh, the judge said throughout the country, about the country and the world. The judge said that engaging in same sex was against the order of nature. Um, and the younger, the now current head of government has continued a moratorium on anti-gay laws that were suspended in 2015. So that's good. Now I'd like to turn to uh, Adeju Thompson, who's 30, and I have a picture before you now of them. They say queerness isn't a Western concept, um, and they are bringing genderless Nigerian fashion to the world. There are very early examples of gender bending in African culture, explains the designer. Um, from West Africa to Europe and beyond, nine binary fashion designer uh, uh, Adeju Thompson is showcasing genderless African fashion on the world stage. Um, Thompson uses they, them pronouns, grew up in Lagos, and except for a stint studying fashion in the UK, has lived in Nigeria their entire life. In 2018, Thompson founded the label Lego Space Program. They say, I'm always collaging different ideas, trying all these things together uh, to highlight the queer community and also to make fun of myself and to make fun of fashion. Um, the designs use a D-ray and indigo-resistant uh, dyed textile, which is a key component worn by West African Yoruba people. Uh, it's reimagined in a modern context by applying the dye technique to knitwear. Thompson calls this reinvention post de So that's good news out of Africa. You know, um, Charlene Hunter Galt, the old commentator, wrote a book called New News Out of <coughs> Africa because decrying all the awful stories that the West um, only seems to cover. So um, I have another interesting 
uh, story from Nigeria um, involving a film. This film is a searing and timely look at the struggle against rampant discrimination that exists in Nigeria today, as seen through the lens of several charismatic nonconformist youth who fight to live out loud. Through social media, celebrity, and bold creativity, they spark a cultural debate that challenges the ideals of gender, conformity, and civil rights in Nigeria. It's an impactful documentary revealing acts of resistance that members of the L Nigerian LGBT community are doing in Lagos and New York City. And speaking of HBO, this premieres today on HBO Max. So let's take a look at Legend of the Underground. Shine bright like a diamond. It is punishable for 10 years in prison, Toby K. Shine bright like a diamond. It's annoying every Nigerian have the right to party. So why should these guys be arrested? Because they were perceived sexuality. I came to the US with one bag, no one friend. Nobody is free until all of us are free. I feel guilty because I have people back home who cannot have this that I'm having. That I'm country saying. is a waste of time. Just leave it behind. On Sunday, intelligence arrested 57 homosexual youths. No one died there. Someone died. It's about being able to make a change and make a difference. So going to Nigeria is something I need to do. We have a community that is thrown out to survive by themselves. A definition of a gay is when you are caught having sexual intercourse with a guy and then he caught me. The whole world is watching me, so do your worst. So shine bright. For Nigeria, is we fear what we don't know. When are we going to overcome all this? Nigeria doesn't go caught being it. This is the time for change. We're beautiful like diamonds in the sky. I want to encourage billions and zillions of people. Telling them that you have rights. Do you know why? Because you're human. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Keith, our other co host. Politics, very quickly. There was a veto session. H177, <coughs> the non citizens voting in Montpelier, they voted to override the veto. Yes. yes. Finally got it. Um, <coughs> There was a story recently about the Human Rights Commission <coughs> investigating a complaint about a complaint against the Williston Barracks of the Vermont State Police saying they discriminated in, in an investigation on an ongoing basis <coughs> um, involving a woman of color who ran the Clemens Farm in Charlotte, Vermont. And apparently she was threatened, terrorized, vandalized by a tenant, repeatedly complained to the police, <coughs> filed her complaint, and the Human Rights Commission has filed in her favor. We will talk about this more in a future show because she specifically asked that details not be released because she was afraid of retaliation. So we are <coughs> only going to know more if the Human Rights Commission <coughs> decides to go for litigation. Two major Supreme Court decisions. Oh. <coughs> First, remember Gavin Grimm? Yes. <coughs> two, 2015, a courageous 16-year-old transgender male suing their school board because the school board said they could not use the bathroom <coughs> that corresponded with their gender <coughs> identity. It was some nurse's office or something. Yeah. It, and the case went back and forth throughout the, throughout the courts. There was a federal court ruling in Gavin's favor that got appealed to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court sent it back down to the federal court for consideration. It recently came back before the Supreme Court, and they voted not to take it up, which means the case is done and that the federal court ruling in Gavin's favor is what stands. Why we're really going to want to be watching this is that, you know, the opinion from people looking at this decision <laughs> and the way it was handed down 
is that this truly reaffirms that gender identity is included under the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution and Title IX of the Education mm -hmm. Amendment. Mm -hmm. We're going to be watching how this impacts all of those bans on transgender athletes in the South because this <coughs> would Which seem will to fly in the right face. against the law. <coughs> Unconstitutional. The other is Fulton versus City of Philadelphia. In this case, Catholic Social Services sued the City of Philadelphia after the city refused to renew a contract with the agency upon learning that they would not place foster children in the homes of same-sex couples. Right. Now, there were lots of amicus briefs that were filed saying that there really needed to be an opinion on the side of the city of Philadelphia based upon the high percentage of children and same-sex couples that were removed from the households and from people of color. The Supreme Court in their decision, which was unanimous, and on the surface made us take a deep breath, but some of the commentary is coming down saying they made a very narrow ruling specific to the case and not giving a broader ruling about religious institutions and discrimination in general. And one of the opinions um, had this to say, that basically it was where the city of Philadelphia had made its mistake, is they singled out the Catholic charity, where they had given exemptions to <coughs> other organizations. So what the Supreme Court says, whatever it is you do has to be uniform, and that's where you made the mistake. And, and part of the opinion was um, the ruling in Fulton reaffirms the rule that governments can prohibit religious entities from discriminating or causing, causing other harm so long as it does so in a general rule that applies to everyone. The city of Philadelphia and all other governments can prohibit anti-LGBTQ plus discrimination in including discrimination by religious entities. In his co concurrence, Justice Alito wrote, with the flick of a pen, municipal lawyers may rewrite the city's contract and to continue to prohibit this discrimination. Mm -hmm. We're going to be watching this really yeah. closely. And someone was really, one of the justices, I forget which one, was really pissed off about that statement. Yeah. Because it really gave them a way to fix this. Yes, well, the two, the two uh, rightward, most rightward leaning justices um, said that uh, really wanted them to uh, introduce, to rule that religious exemptions right. could be granted and across the board, and they didn't. And they refused yeah. to do that. Yeah. And in one sense, they've <clears throat> given us the roadmap of how we navigate all of the religious restoration exemptions that we're being confronted with. And what I'm particularly going to be watching here in Vermont is there was a Supreme Court decision that said, oh yes, you know, schools run by communities of faith, such as Catholic schools, are eligible to receive taxpayer money. And they shouldn't be. Well, the question, well, no, no, no. The question then becomes here in Vermont where we have clear anti-discrimination language and it includes education. How will that get applied and what is it that, you know, a community of faith school will or will not be allowed to do? Not so it's, it's going to be I interesting to watch. Not. Throw the, throw the bums out. Oh, I think it's just starting, Yeah. You know? <laughs> Throw them all out. There we go. All right, so we have protesters pour out beers. Anheuser-Busch doesn't deserve to use rainbow colors. So the iconic Stonewall Inn poured out bottles to protest Anheuser-Busch's political donations, saying the corporation gives money to politicians who back anti-LGBTQ legislation. 
I love attitudes like that. I know. Yeah. Under Spontaneous. Under yeah. Well, but <laughs> if I may interrupt briefly, what's interesting is I think Anheuser Busch is one of the corporations on the human rights campaign corporate index gets incredibly high ratings yeah, for LGBTQ. Thing. We need someone. They're giving up both sides of their mouths, really, exactly. is what right. they're doing. We need a list from someone of, okay, so who are the major corporations that are donating to all of the anti-LGBTQ right. plus, right. not just the candidates, but organizations. Mm -hmm. and, and they're gen generally two-sided. Such as Pfizer. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one, yeah. Yeah. And the KKK hands <coughs> out LGBT flyers in Virginia. Flyers were handed out in the same counties that have been targeted for pro protesting a policy <coughs> in support of trans students. Police in Leesbury have collected 35 flyers that have been given out by the white supremacist group, the Loyal White Knights. The flyers read, Loudoun County opposes queer loving, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, BMX writer Chelsea Wolfe becomes the first transgender Olympian after qualifying for the Tokyo Games as an alternative. She's a what, what kind of athlete? Uh, bicycle. Oh, bicycle. bicycle. Rider. Rider, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and this is an interesting story, which is, um, I don't know if anybody knew this, but the great lesbian love affair of Rose Cleveland. <laughs> the former first lady of the United States, Rose served as first lady in 1885 after her bachelor brother appointed her as First Lady. James Buchanan. So when Cleveland married, Rose began a relationship with Evangeline Simpson, a rich widow known for her phil philanthropic work with the American Red Cross. So she was Cleveland's sister. Yes, but he appointed her First Lady because oh, he was single. Mm -hmm. So she was legitimately a First Lady. So. I think he may have been from Buffalo. Don't. They might have. Uh, a man has been charged with doing a burnout on Delray Beach's LGBTQ Pride sidewalk crosswalk. Alexander Zurich, 20, turned himself in. He was fined $1,000 for reckless driving and a felony enhancement for evidence of prejudice. And there's a story, um, oh, and then there was the man in, in Florida at um, Wilton Manors, and he was part of the, the group, of course. A gay men's chorus. Gay men's chorus. Oh. And, you know, he lost control of his car. He killed one person and injured two. I'm sure, and he's apologized, of course, but the truck was part of the chorus entry in Wilton Manors. And so. I heard he, instead of stepping on the brake, he stepped on the gas. Yeah. And just I mean, for that's my, what it looked like in the film. And I guess I, I will do a couple of other stories later, you know, next time. But this is really, you'll like this one. Uh, four <coughs> women are throwing a pride parade in a tiny, tiny town in Nevada. They don't know how many people will show up. The town was featured in Armistead Maupin's Tales of the City novels, as the hometown of Anna Madrigal. Madrigal. Yes! <laughs> but these women have put in the hard work of organizing. The town is Winnemucca. It's Winnemucca. Winnemucca. Yeah. Yep. The festival will be July 16th and 17th, and the city council has agreed to open the streets for the festival. So hooray for Sean Dixon and her daughter Kate and friend Christine Basso and Misty Huff for putting this together. So It makes Anna Madrigal very happy. I know, <laughs> I know. And then, you know, just briefly, I'm gonna do an honor of the 40th anniversary of the beginning of HIV, but I'm gonna do that later because it's sort of a 
long um, um, discussion about the contributions and legacy of Ruth Coker Brooks, who um, took care of over a thousand people, uh, mm -hmm. men with HIV, yeah. uh, and you know was their nurse, their mother, their friend. So anyway, we'll do that later. So. Do we so, have anything else, in, or what are we doing? Oh, we have, well, trivia. We have trivia. trivia, which is kind of lengthy this time. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll save Be the European Union. Okay, and so juicy. On the next show, I'm going to report, also report on the incident that happened at Otter Valley High School in Brandon, where they had a spontaneous Pride event, and the don't tread on me anti-response, and how it seemed only the LGBTQ students were suspended. Mm. <coughs> uh, so, the original pride flag yeah. may have had <coughs> hot pink, which stood for sex, red, which stood for life, orange, which symbolized healing, yellow for sunlight, green for nature, you're looking back there to see which ones aren't there, turquoise for magic and art. That's the one that we need to bring back. Indigo for serenity and harmony. Violet for spirit. And the year after Gilbert released it, he immediately took out both the hot pink and the turquoise because <coughs> as Linda got, they were difficult, and expen difficult to find and expensive. However, this hasn't been a stagnant process. In 1979, it was the Six Stripes. 2017, Philadelphia included the black and brown chevron stripes for inclusion of Black Lives Matter people of color. 2000, Arizona added the transgender colors across the top. And this year, in the UK, they included a yellow triangle with, I believe it's a dark teal circle for the intersex community. Wow. So this has been very much an ongoing and evolutionary process to ensure that when you see the flag, you really do see yourself looking back. Mm. So. Well, thank you. That was very informative. It, it's why I'm here. And that's why I'm looking at the flag. It, it's why I'm here for you. <coughs> yeah. We we may have to get a new one. I know. Yeah. I it may be on you. order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. And uh, in the meantime, until next time, resist. resist. Thank you.